In today's video, we're going to tell you all you need to know about controls in Data Studio. So I built a pre-built visualization here. Uh, it's on the Iowa Liquor set. I have my sales and profit by vendor in dollars. I have a scatter chart here, which has sales in dollars and profit in dollars on a scatter graph by category. And I am going to just uh, increase that up a little bit. So 50 categories in there. And then down below, I have a bar chart, which gives me my average profit per category. And I want to create some controls or filters that are going to filter this graph down to give us more insights. So to add a control in Google Daddy Studio, just click control and select from this list. And most of these controls are available in style, but let's start down with the drop down selector. So all the drop down selector is, it's for categorical data really and you will pick your uh, control field, which is your dimension. I'm gonna put category name in there instead. And then from there, we can add to style. So one thing you can do is you can have default selectors. I really have too many categories to do that. And um, this would be really for like A, B, C, D, or company codes or something like that. You change the name on the filter by changing the name in the field. So I'm just changing it to category and that's what will display here. Also displays when I click in and there's a lot of styling within the dropdown as well. So the metric is only there in the dropdown. So I'm going to change the text on that. And then you can see that say it's changed to sales in dollars now. So doing a couple more styling things in this, just going to change it to zero uh, decimal places. And then if we move on to style, I'll show you how some of the styling works. So you can change the drop down fixed size or single select here. Um, and then if you want to change the outside look of it, the text is here for the outside label. And then the header is actually on the inside drop down. So I've changed the header color there and you can see the header background color has changed. And in here as well, we can change the text color. We can also change the tick boxes inside the dropdown. So I'm just going to display this by changing it to a dark gray. And you can see that the tick box is there. So a lot of different styling options you can use. You could, there's three different styling options for the tick box. The background color is the background color on the outside of the dropdown. So we can change that to wherever we want. I'm just going to reset that there. And then more of the customization options. There is a search uh, option available where you can search inside the filter and then choose your category. You can click that on or off. And it's, it's an extremely useful tool to use. So then from here, we can turn that search box off. So that's disabled now. We can change this to single select so we don't have multi-select that we just have a single selector in here and we can select a single category. So this if you want to restrict people to single selects. Um, and then finally, this is another uh, type of, of control. It's a fixed size. So the fixed size would be when you have a small number of categories. You, you can just display them all the, down the side of the page. But for this one, we're go not going to use that because it's not... Um, it's not the best for what we're looking to do. So the next type of filter is an advanced filter, and this is still really for text. Um, and this is really when you have a lot of categories going really advanced into your texts. So within vendor name here, I'm just going to change this to category. Actually within category, I can choose a contains string. So if I want something that contains say scotch, I just type in scotch. And then below you can see that these are the two that contain scotch. Now this is a case sensitive filter. So if I want something in two cases, what I can do is either do a regular expression or choose an in statement where I can go in to full search strings. So I've got in single mall scotch in single mall scotch in capitals, and that's picked up in my in statement. Really not something you get people to do too much. It's more for just kind of um, dashboards with a lot of information. So next thing I can use for um, next thing I can use more for numerics is I can use a range filter. So I put my profit and dollars into this range slider. And then I can just take it down to all the uh, sales that didn't make a profit. 
and then I can have a look at all the sales that didn't make a profit, what companies they were in, and how many sale, how much value in sales, and all that sort of stuff there. So pretty useful um, in some respects if you want to see kind of invoices that didn't make a profit, what categories were in, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to change this now to single sales that made a huge profit, and you can see they're all in two vendors. There was a good amount of sales in different categories as well. So probably the most useful filter out of all the filters is the date filter. And that's because we can bring in extra fields into your most of your graphs with the date filter. And I'll show you how to do that now. So first, I'm going to start by selecting a date range. There's a lot of ways you can do this. Um, all by, auto. if you want an automatic dashboard, it's like last seven days, last 14 days, this week, this month, this quarter. So super useful there. You can even do very advanced if you want to and get down into the number of days since a certain date. Um, I'm not going to do that here. I'm just going to select uh, last year just to show this uh, comparison um, functionality within the tables and the scatter plots. So once I've selected a date, that's my date in controls. And this only works if I have a date selected. So I have a date in controls there and then I can select a comparison date. So I'm going to compare last year's sales to the previous year. Normally, you would also go with previous period because that means that anybody can set the, you can set the timer to whatever you want, like 14 days a week, and you can see the previous week. But this actually brings in a, this brings in a new metric in. It tells you percentage. You can change that to absolute as well. Not all visualizations have this, like the bar chart doesn't have this, but the scatter plot does as well. So I'm going to do the same thing, but instead of previous year, I'm going to compare this to the previous period and this will bring in points from the previous period a few too many there to make any observations so i'm just going to go into style and reduce the scatter plot down to my top five and you can see now that there's um there's previous years and current years and there's different styling you can do in this as well but it's really really useful uh, functionality there Another option is in visualization filtering, you'll go down and add a filter to the visualization itself. Quite a prescriptive one, include, exclude certain fields, but we're just focusing on controls in this video, so I won't go too deep into that one today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Your filters are extremely powerful, extremely useful, especially when you're dealing with finances for the comparison. Uh, hope this was useful. Questions asked down below, and I'll see you very soon for another Data Studio tutorial.